So let's make a turning saw. Uh, I found a piece of wood that I've been holding for a little while. It was a really nice piece of mahogany with an interesting grain in it. And it was perfect size and shape. The uh, blade was just made out of a bandsaw blade. It was the one thing that I had to purchase because uh, I don't have a bandsaw. <laughs> but uh, it was easily cut, just a pair of tin snips, and I can cut it to the right length. The particular length I used was just a random length. I wanted it to be about that long. So I cut it about that long. Now with the drill bit, I just poked a hole in it. I made the, uh, the hole the size that it needs to be. Uh, that size is determined by the hardware that I had on hand. And fairly straightforward, just dimpled a little hole with an awl and drilled the hole. The hardware came from a sawzall that I had purchased a while ago, an uh, old sawzall for a buck at a garage sale. And the hardware was precisely what I needed to hold either end. Now that I had the blade cut, I had to make the uh, wooden pieces. So the, the stretcher that goes between the two beams was cut to two and a half inches longer than the blade. And that would give me one inch for the tenon to go into either of the beams, and then a quarter inch on either side past the blade until it hit the beam. Now with the two beams, I needed to shape them. And the very first piece to make was actually uh, nipping off the end so that the hardware would fit because the hardware was uh, slightly shorter than the lumber I had grabbed. The lumber I grabbed, I believe, was inch and a half by three quarter strip. Now we have to make this uh, mortise, and as you can see, it has a curve in it that allows the beam and uh, stretcher to float between the two as you tighten and loosen the, uh, the blade. To make that curve, I just grabbed a random roll of tape. Uh, I think it's about four inches in diameter. Uh, but it was the first thing I grabbed and uh, made the curve. Uh, seemed to work out pretty well. Marked both sides of the beam so that I could then take a chisel and carve into shape and just go down to that line. Actually took it slightly short of the line and then used a uh, card, uh, card scraper to clean it up a little bit. Kids are in the shop making their things alongside of me, so you might hear them in the background. But I love having kids in the shop. Now let's cut a mortise. Uh, fairly straightforward. I cut it the width of my favorite chisel, which is three millimeters. <laughs> not, not too much else to say about that other than uh, cut it in the right place. And there's the mortise with the, uh, the curved insert. Now it's time to cut a tenon. The tenon I actually ended up cutting with my dovetail saw and it was a, a fairly simple process. The only thing interesting about this is because it is curved at the shoulder, uh, I had to be careful when cutting down, and so I cut one side and then cut the other. I didn't cut into the shoulder at all. Now with that, let's cut the shoulder, and I just made two cuts fairly close to the line, uh, but not right at it. Because it's curved, uh, it was better to actually get closer to it with the chisel. And that's the, uh, the process there. I love cutting in grain. For some reason, this is just a really enjoyable step. Good sharp chisel is fun. Now, the one last thing I had to do was nip off the corners of the tenon. This was uh, just so that it would have a little bit of slop when it's in the beam, um, so I can uh, move it a little bit as it uh, goes back and forth. There's the tenon with the uh, curved shoulder. Now the fun part. Shaping the beam and uh, stretcher. Uh, I really didn't have any design other than looking at a few pictures online. I just wanted something that felt good. And so it was a lot of going back and forth with the, uh, with the chisel and with the, uh, the spoke shave and just fitting it to my hand. Um, did it feel good? Did it look good? That's all I was looking for. And uh, large chunks took out with a chisel, small chunks took out with the uh, spoke shave, and then the final process was done with uh, rasp and file, just slowly going over the whole thing. This is the point at which the rope will attach in the future. It always amazes me how a rasp and file really can make a, a final finished surface. Really kind of beautiful, um, especially with all these or organic curves and shapes.
it does really quick work. Now that I had one of the two beams done, I laid it on top of the second one and uh, traced out what I did just to make sure that they match. And then go to town on that one. The stretcher going between the two beams was uh, fairly straightforward. Um, your hand doesn't grab that very often, so I just was doing something for looks. And I kind of like it. It uh, was a little different from others I've seen, but uh, nice. A dry fit just to make sure everything works well, fits well, and uh, looks good. Now here's the boring part. Yeah, that's where the hardware connects. It's boring. The one last piece I had to make was the small strip to go in the strings so that I can tighten the saw. Um, I didn't have any mahogany for that, so I just made that one out of red oak and uh, quickly shaped it down. I love to use boiled linseed oil. Uh, this is real boiled linseed oil. It doesn't have the solvent like the stuff you get at the big box stores. So it's safe to use on the hands and feels really good. You just have to be careful with your rags. Um, well, as with any finish, they might combust. The final is just a paste wax, which I love to apply with hands. You just get to feel it and, and shape it, and it just has a different feel when you, when you apply it with your hand rather than a rag. And uh, I love real handmade tools. The last step is assembly, which is fairly straightforward. Just use some string I had on hand and put it all together and voila. And yeah, I'm happy. She looks great and uh, yeah. So there is my first turning saw. Uh, I've been wanting to make one for a while and kind of putting it off and putting it off. It's just not uh, not my normal build, but uh, I finally got to the point where I, I need this because I have a couple projects coming up where I want to cut a long, um, uneven curve. And that's just something I can't do with a panel saw and a coping saw it would take forever. Uh, it'll actually take me less time to make this than it would be to do with a coping saw. Uh, and I am, I am flabbergasted. This is awesome. I, I should have made one of these years ago. Uh, this is this is a definite definite tool for the shop. The, the cut on it is beautiful I and mean, absolutely fantastic. Uh, just like I would have expected from a bandsaw, which well, it is a bandsaw blade. Um, it was fast. It was smooth. I am I'm happy. Uh, so I'm going to be using this a lot more. Uh, this particular one I made it of mahogany, uh, a little bit lighter wood, uh, but still fairly sturdy. Uh, works well. Um, red oak for the stick. Um, some extra string I had laying around, bandsaw blade. I made the the um, hardware from a hacksaw blade. So this was basically all made out of stuff in my shop. Really quick and easy project, and uh, I, I couldn't be happier. This is this is awesome. Um, the only change I think I would make in the future um, is making it easier to turn the blade. This one I can I can I can grip it fairly easily and turn it. This one is a little bit more difficult, so I usually get a pair of pliers to turn that. Um, most turning saws actually have a handle here and there, uh, but then you, you're wanting to grab that handle sometimes, and that's just, you're not supposed to grab the handle, you grab the frame itself. Um, I didn't want to mess with those, I didn't have them in stock, and I didn't want to come up with that when I have this hardware already made. Uh, so with the one side effect of I have to have a pair of pliers on hand to rotate this if I need to rotate it, uh, which isn't that much, um, it's really not a problem. So. I will probably make another one at some point in the future and make some modifications uh, just because I like to make multiple tools. But until then, this is awesome. So you've got to go make one of these and uh, see what it can do. This is <laughs> really, really surprising to me. I hope you like this video. Uh, please let me know in the comments below what did I do wrong? Uh, is there something I, I could have done uh, better? I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, if you just like it and would love to tell me, I'd love to hear that. So please. Let me know what you think. Also, if you like the video, hit like or subscribe and feel free to check out one of my other videos. Have a wonderful day!